everyone. I'm Paula Eggleston. I am Vice President of Citizen Engagement with the Charleston Area League of Women Voters. And during election season, one thing that we do among many is to sponsor candidate forums or candidate discussions so the community can learn more about the candidates. The League of Women Voters is nonpartisan. We do not support particular candidates. We want voters to have all the information they can get about our various candidates and offices in South Carolina and particularly in the low country. Now, one of the things I wanted to make you aware of is vote411.org, which is a place where you can go to get information about the candidates' positions. Today, we are going to be interviewing Ronnie DiCanio, and she is running for a seat um, in District 97. Her opponent uh, did not want to participate in a candidate forum, and we wanted to provide Ms. DiCanio the opportunity to state her positions on various topics um, in a different format. So this is an interview format. And the first question, or actually it's not a question, the first thing that I'd like for Ms. DiCanio to do is to state, to provide an opening statement. And she has 60 seconds to do that. Well, good morning. Happy to be doing this. And, and everyone can find my information on just Google Ronnie for State House. So you'll get to the website and all the information you need about me. But I did, I did want to say something about why I think I'm qualified for this house seat. I've lived in many places, even overseas, and I have worked in many different jobs. I have volunteered in many different ways. And that provided me with a very different perspective. So what I want you to know is everybody I've ever talked to, we all want the same things. We want places to live. Uh, we want to be able to raise our families. We want health care. We want safety. So I think my perspective, my background allows me uh, to have a broader view so that I think I will make a very effective State House representative. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, now for the first question. Do you support or oppose Medicaid expansion in South Carolina and explain? I support it. Uh, I can tell you two things. My dad was on Medicaid. He was uh, very badly crippled by arthritis. So he had to stop working as a construction worker in his late 50s. He died when he was 94, and we would not have had all that time with him if he didn't have Medicaid to provide for his operations and his prescriptions. They, uh, they, he was really a guinea pig for lots of new things. The second thing was the last home I bought before moving to South Carolina was the foreclosure. It was an elderly couple who decided to pay their medical bills instead of their mortgage. Do we want our seniors to be evicted or lose their homes in foreclosures? We have something like $164,000 $164, people without health care in our state. We have to change that. Okay, let's move on to question two. What policies do you support to affect change in the criminal, excuse me, criminal justice system in South Carolina? The first thing is we need a hate crime law. We have to have something that would provide us with the tool, for lack of a better word. Uh, if there are motive, if there are a hate crime motivated crimes, we have to have something. Uh, criminal justice, we cannot use our jails uh, for interventions and drug therapy. And I'd like to see our young people not be uh, put into the same jail system as hardened criminals and uh, lifelong violent felons. We have to provide them with a different type of system because we will lose those young people. And sometimes they are minor infractions that they are going to jail for. 
All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next question. What suggestions do you have for managing the pandemic at the state level, as well as preparing for pandemics in the future? Well, the first thing, let's stop looking to the federal government for help because that did work so well, did it, with this pandemic. Scientists are telling us that we've had viruses in the past, but we, we got hit with the big one and it could happen again. Our state has to be prepared. We have to have lots of PPEs and all kinds of equipment that we can store for a length of time for our hospitals, our schools, our businesses, any institution. And we have to have state mandates for masks, wearing, not wearing, for stay at home orders. We have to have all of that in place before another pandemic hits. Because if without a plan, there is no plan. And, P and every town and city cannot make their own plans during something like a worldwide pandemic. All right, thank you. Question four, comment on the current gun laws in South Carolina. Well, a couple of things. Number one, I believe we should ban assault rifles. Not a popular stand here, but that's how I feel. I don't see any purpose. We're not skeet shooting with them. We're not hunting with them. And I had a friend who did um, have lots of rifles. He was a collector. And I can tell you that friend of mine did not storm the state house in Michigan, was not on the streets in Charlottesville, was not killing children in, in schools and theaters. Secondly, I would like to see the red flag law expanded to include boyfriends and significant others. It's not only family members that kill people. So we need to expand that to protect women who are killed by significant others, boyfriends, neighbors, that has to be expanded. All right, thank you. Now we wanna provide you with an opportunity to make closing remarks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, whoever's watching this, we need to vote. This is the election of our lifetime. We cannot be sitting by the sidelines and expecting someone else to do that. It's our, not our privilege, as they tell you, not an honor. It's our obligation to do this. We, that is our voice. It's the, pretty much the only real voice we have to change things. Get out there and vote. And vote early. There's no reason not to. Yes, some of the lines are long. I'm going myself next week to vote early. I'm not waiting until the third. So please vote early, but vote. And get your family members and friends to do the same thing. We need change, and that is the way we get it. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate your availability to sit for this interview and to provide citizens with your statements regarding various positions.